recommended. How did you do that or why did you do that? No, I think it's it's more proper really to give an explanation as to where we are at. OK, so people are very familiar with the process that happened in school. Uh, schools were invited to offer a percentage mark and a rank order for the students. And that was uploaded uh, to the portal. And after that, then the national standardisation kicks in. The national standardisation had at its heart, we'll say, the, those two aspects, and it included the junior certificate uh, achievement for the present leaving certificate cohort. And it also included the national standard achieved subject by subject over the last number of years. And finally, up to today, it included the historical data of a school or the historical achievement of a school. Now, fundamentally, I, I do believe that a student should not be adjudicated on the basis of the performance of, of the school that he or she attends over the past number of years. And I know also that has been a concern for others. And indeed, we saw what happened in other jurisdictions. So because of that, that element, I brought it to Cabinet today and asked for its removal, and so it has been removed. And so the national standardisation process now continues um, with the other elements. But again, could I say... So the process hasn't been completed yet? Well, it's, it's almost, it is in its, its final stages of completion. Will it and be it ready for Monday? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, the results will be available on Monday the 7th, the CEO offers on, on Friday, and the following Monday then the, the appeals open. But could I say again also that you, you reference um, percentages up and percentages down. This is the first time we've done this system. Um, teachers were being asked for the first time to um, estimate their, their, their own students and very and important. And they did that, but you changed did. their recommendations in one out of five cases. No. So how was that actually arrived at? Well, uh, if I could explain really what actually happened was every teacher estimated their own students and they are best placed to do that. They know the capabilities and abilities of the students within their own class. It would not be fair for them to estimate or to have an appreciation of the students, we'll say, in the next class or in the next school, uh, 100 uh, miles away or 200 miles away or whatever. So for that reason, standardisation was brought in. And the standardisation is always and traditionally a feature of the Leaving Certificate. And it meant that for the, the class of 2020, that they would know that student to student, there was a comparability of grades achieved. And equally so that for the class of 2020, as close as possible as we could make it, the comparability between 2019 and hopefully 2021 would stand with 2020. OK, so those one in five grades that have been changed, will the students have to trigger an appeal to find out that their grade was changed? Again, just in relation to, I, I suppose we'd have to say, 84 to 85 per cent of the grades that were offered um, by the teachers were retained or improved. But and the, we have the those one statistics, five, Minister, you, but, yeah, the but how five, will people find out whether they were changed or not? The, Do they have to trigger an appeal or will they automatically be told? Uh, the, the one in five that you refer to is an acknowledgement that there was always going to be some element of overestimation today. Again, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a new process. And what they not? will do is... Do they have to trigger an appeal? On the 14th of September, they will see exactly uh, what they received in terms of the calculated grade and they will also see the percentage mark that they received from the school. So at that point, automatically they can make, every student will get that. At, and at that point, students can decide for themselves should they wish to appeal. And equally so, there is another mechanism for students on the 16th of November should they so wish that they can sit the written exam. And important also to say, Katrina, that the best of the two grades then that they receive will be what will be on their final leaving certificate. So, um, so they'll get the best grade there. Exactly. But when they find in a week from now, oh, my grade was downgraded by the department, by the, the, the overarching body, they can't really appeal that beyond knowing that there was a difference. You have advised teachers to destroy all the paperwork and everything that they used to come up with those recommended grades. So if a student finds out that they've been downgraded one grade or even in a small number of cases they've been downgraded two grades, how will they know or how will an appeal person know actually what their true grade was? Well, again, just to reiterate, between 13 and 16 percent um, of the grades, not the students, of the grades uh, will drop by one or uh, and at, at that stage, OK, the students, as I said, have the opportunity to go to the portal. They will see what the teachers awarded in terms of the percentage marks. And after that, they will obviously have seen... But they on can't the appeal that they grade can. in the way that they could have got a paper checked and yes. seen, oh, a question was missed there yes, or whatever. Yes, and, and I accept that. And I would have to say to you that there is no paper this year insofar as the students didn't sit a paper. This of is course, an extraordinary is that, measure. Is that not a problem, though, for students that if they, if they do see, gosh, that really is not what I deserved or what I'm worth, they have no option? Yeah, I suppose, again, to give it some context, 
It is an extraordinary measure. The calculated grades were an agreed process brought in because we were living in extraordinary times. The option, I think, for everyone would have been to sit the traditional leaving cert. But this is the process that we have. If students aren't um, happy with the grade as they see it uh, on the 14th, the calculated grade vis-a-vis -vis the grade, the, the percentage mark given by the teachers, at that stage when the appeal kicks in, what we're looking at is there will be an independent oversight of this. We will go back to see the information that was upgraded from the school. Was it correctly done? Was the process as the process should have been? But again, and the raw material will have been destroyed. So that is an issue. But if I can just move on to well, another matter. There was no one element of raw material. You know, teachers were relying on a variety of judgments yes, and, but, and, and but, but none engagements. of that is there. They, they were instructed by the department to get rid of the paper trail, if you like. But can I just move on and ask you about this one Dublin school today yes. that has had to send home one of its classes in a Dublin primary school because of a case of COVID-19. We're very early into the back to school process. Were you surprised to see that? Well, I think we've got to accept in the first instance, we have 4,000 schools, 1 million children and 100,000 staff. And you reference one school. And I think we have to be realistic too. We are living in a world where we are now journeying with COVID. I think fantastic work has gone on in, uh, in the schools around the country to ensure that we are living in as safe an environment as we possibly can within the schools. And indeed to reiterate that experts, including uh, Professor Philip Nolan and others have said that schools by their essence are safe places. But there will be situations as has arisen today and I can't comment on the specific one. But, but I, will say, to you, to, see but I will say to you in general, everything that should have happened within that environment happened and um, the, the diagnosis was made, public health came on site, public health made the determination. I wouldn't burden that determination uh, on any principal or any school community. It's a public health issue. Public health issue, uh, public health did their job and the processes and the protocols that we've outlined are clearly working. All right, we'll have to leave it there for this evening. Minister of Education, Norman Foley, thanks for joining us. Thank you.